Play different. Greetings fellow Mac addicts. In this video we're looking at the Glyphor trilogy from John Calhoun slash Soft Dorothy Software. I say it's a trilogy, but it would be more accurate to say that they are iterations of the same game, which itself is a clone of the 1982 arcade game Joust. Glyphor has quite a few differences to make it feel unique compared to the arcade original, but I'll talk more about that later. For now, let's discuss Glyphor's basic gameplay as first seen in the original black and white version released in 1990. You're a nameless man trapped in an Egyptian temple. You fly around on your winged steed and are armed with a lance. Over time, sphinxes will spawn and you must battle them. Combat is simple, you just have to collide with an enemy when your lance is higher than theirs, as pictured in the help screen. It doesn't even matter if you're facing away from each other, whoever is higher will win the fight. Oh, but that doesn't actually kill the enemies. It will just turn them into eggs, which will fly and bounce around the screen until they land somewhere. You can grab this egg for extra points, but more importantly, if you leave them for too long, the egg will hatch into a stronger enemy than the one that was defeated. Levels will also not be considered complete if any eggs remain. As the player progresses, things get tougher. For example, a pool of lava is exposed with a giant grabby hand that emerges from it if players get too close. Additionally, increasingly aggressive enemies spawn and more of them appear on screen at the same time. A giant eye also shows up if the player spends too much time messing around. So, there are two things you need to master to be good at this game. The first is the movement of your winged steed. It can only move left and right and flap its wings. Flapping your wings will increase your vertical velocity, but gravity will always bring you back down. Rapidly smashing the flap button will shoot you straight up, but at the cost of precision, so it's all about maintaining control over your momentum. This is especially true since bumping into things, including the ceiling, will just send you bouncing right back off it. The second thing you need to master is manipulating enemy behaviours. So basically, learn how your own movement makes the enemies move so as to put them in vulnerable positions and also using the platforms to help you get a height advantage. The first Glyphor, while certainly less refined than later installments, is still a blast to play today and I think one of the better arcade games for black and white Max. It's also quite tough but has some friendly accessibility options such as changing your starting level and number of lives, though changing the latter will of course bar you from the high score table. But the series wasn't to be monochrome forever. The very next year in 1991, we saw the release of Glyphor 2. The most noticeable difference is that it was now in glorious 16 colours. It also runs at a higher resolution than the original, 640x480 to be precise, which is used to make the playing area more open. Some of you may have noticed that the first game looked a little bit cramped. The game also runs smoother than the original, and has tweaks here and there, such as different enemy AI, physics and enemy patterns to the first installment, plus much more accurate hitboxes which were a bit large in the first game. Overall, I think it feels better than the original, though the enemy AI can get a bit predictable, but that won't help you much in later levels with faster and more aggressive foes. Oh, you can also no longer change the amount of lives you have, but you can still change your starting level. Several years later, in 1995, we got the final instalment of the series, fittingly titled Glyphor 3. This time the game is in glorious 256 colours, but that's far from the only change. It uses a brand new and more realistic physics engine, runs silky smooth and features more varied enemy AI. There is also no longer a way to change the number of lives you have or which level you start on, 
the lava is exposed from the get-go and the waves start out rougher than in the earlier games, which makes this one less accessible. I personally like how quickly it gets to the action, but it would have been nice to have a few options to help people who are new to the game. Having said that, I do think this one plays the best out of all three installments, especially with the new physics. It just feels really good to fly around and poke your enemies. Back in the early 90s, emulation wasn't a thing, so most developers had to rely on their memories when cloning classic games, and it was no different for John Calhoun when he decided to pay tribute to Joust. There are actually quite a few differences between the games, such as enemy behaviour, scoring mechanics, and so on, but I'll focus on two of the bigger ones. The first is the movement. In Joust, movement is very rigid and lumbering, whilst in Glyphor, it's much snappier and lighter. When Calhoun played the original game in MAME years after making Glyphor, he was surprised at how different it felt, and in the end, prefers his own game. I frankly also prefer Glyphor over Joust, as while I do like the bizarre Mars Ostrich aesthetic of the original arcade game, and it does communicate some things better to the player such as where and when enemies will spawn, Glyphor just feels more satisfying to play. I'm sure that there are some purists out there that will tell me that the rigid controls of Joust are part of what makes the game a classic, and maybe you're right, but it just never jived with me. The other notable difference is the level layout. Now in Joust, you may have noticed tiered platforms on the middle right, something that Glyphor lacks. Why does Joust have these? Well, it's so you can't do this. Now, I personally don't see this as a problem. I actually find it pretty satisfying going back and forth, plus it's not long before this strategy becomes difficult to maintain due to the speed of the spawning. But why did Calhoun decide to clone Joust in the first place? He actually isn't a fan of cloning games, as he considers it akin to covering a song. As a tribute, he thinks it's cool, but at the end of the day, he would rather make something original. But when working on Glider, he was worried he was only conceiving of and implementing games he already knew he could write. So he decided it would be a fun experiment to take an existing game that would be a challenge to recreate and pay homage to. Okay, but why Joust specifically? Well, there was a machine at Godfather's Pizza in Kansas City where Calhoun happened to work when he was 19 or so. He fell in love with the game there, and wasn't aware of any Macintosh version, so took that game on as his challenge. As a side note, Joust would get an official port in 1994 from Digital Eclipse. As for why Calhoun went with an Egyptian theme, he believes it was inspired by the old Macintosh Cairo font, which included some glyphs. This font was also an inspiration behind Cairo Shootout by Dwayne Blem. Glyphor is dedicated to the memory of Blem, a valued member of the Macintosh community who tragically passed away at a young age. Glyphor continued to be a testbed for Calhoun over the years. For example, when Cassidy and Green agreed to publish Glider 4.0, they gave him enough money up front to buy a colour Macintosh, and the first thing he did with it was colourise Glyphor and release it as Glyphor 2. And that is the story of Glyphor a trilogy of fast and fun arcade games on the Macintosh.